Entertainment Tonight presents da -da 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 -da. E.T. Vault Unlocked Kevin Costner. It's what I aspire to is have a career that other people look back on. I don't want no trouble. I'm so tired. My life's been really filled with great moments. E.T. on the sets of Kevin's iconic westerns. Riding horses and rolling around the dirt. His love stories. We wrestle. She shows me up against a wall. And eight sports-themed films. If you build it, he will come. I've always just played baseball, so I understood how to play. Plus, that's such a difficult thing for me to even think about being hot or something. Never before told stories from The Bodyguard. So I was like, all right, well, don't put your tongue in my mouth, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> How Kevin was working on a sequel with Princess Diana. And I made a special point not to tell anybody for the longest time. This is E.T. Vault Unlocked Kevin Costner. It is a good job. <laughs> He's been a baseball player, an irresistible bodyguard, and too many cowboys to count. Welcome, everyone, to Entertainment Tonight, and our tribute to the KC masterpiece known as Kevin Costner. You know, no show has spent more time with the award-winning actor, director, and musician who truly showed Hollywood how the West was won. Come on out, boys! Jason Town, let's start the ball! We don't kill sheep, we kill wolves. If you can't get excited about chasing bad guys and shooting them, and riding horses and rolling around the dirt, then I, you know, I don't think you should be in the movies. I love the guns, I love the beard, and I love the hat. I need you to hand over your prisoner, Sheriff. I like the physical part of acting. I like riding the horse. You know, it's recess for me. Grit, honesty, resilience. I will not be the one who breaks. Kevin Costner is all about Old West values, and his next project reflects that. I'm excited about your Horizon project, directing, producing, and starring in it. Yeah. That's awesome. Congratulations. It's a bunch. A bunch is right. The four-part franchise was shot in southern Utah. The saga captures the settlement of the American West before and after the Civil War. I know the man I met was on his way to kill everyone in that house. He might as well have been walking up to get the mail for all that bothered him. The first film in Horizon, an American saga, is out June 28th. That's what I aspire to, is have a career that other people will look back on. Kev's Old West inspiration goes way back. About 25 years ago, I, for my birthday, I had my parents bring me down from Ventura to the Cinerama Dome. I, I wanted to see this movie, How the West Was Won. And I was so taken with the Western and the Cowboys and this big 70 millimeter thing. And I'll never forget that. Kevin Costner. Kevin's passion has helped him win two Oscars, an Emmy, and three Golden Globes. This one hell of a life. One of those globes, of course, was for his role as the Dutton family patriarch in Paramount Network's Yellowstone. It's all for nothing. I'm so glad I've found the movies of my life. They've made a difference. I, I don't know what would have happened to me if I hadn't. Those movie heroes, Hollywood greats who played cowboys, Steve McQueen, Gary Cooper, Paul Newman. Paul is an actor that I have studied for a long time. <laughs> You do some unbelievable stunts. Right. You got the horses happening and the buffalo. It was pretty dangerous. I do my stuff, you know, I like it. The majority of the time, it's me out there hacking around, partly because that's the fun of the movies for me. Have you ever had a, a mishap? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like what? I mean, I fell in the midst of the buffalo. And really? Dances. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. If you go hard, you know, things are going to happen. Yeah, going hard is in Kevin's DNA and it got him in more trouble while filming the 1999 film For Love of the Game at Yankee Stadium. E.T. was there. And your cut fastball, how is it? It sails a little bit, but it's really unpredictable. Those were, what, 70 mile per hour throws? Mm, like, probably a little higher than that. I experienced some pain that I hadn't before in my life. There was no place for the pain to go and I just really just got sick sometimes. I had to take some strong stuff to just, you know, get me through. I ain't 22 anymore. I've always just played baseball, so I understood how to play. I played it, you know, through in, into college. Wanted to be a professional athlete, but wasn't really probably good enough. That's right, Kevin's dreams of going pro almost derailed his Hollywood career. He was on the roster at Cal State Fullerton until he was cut his senior year. That's when he started taking acting lessons and strung together eight different sports-themed films over 30 years. I don't really choose them. They, they, in a way, they end up choosing me. I've never commissioned a baseball story. I've never commissioned a golf. I've never, you know, done that, you know. But somehow these scripts have found their way to me, and um, I've enjoyed kind of uh, being a part of them. One of his first, a love letter to America's pastime, started with that whisper in a cornfield. If you build it, he will come. 
Field of Dreams did a great job of explaining the mystical part of baseball that very few of us could ever do. The emotions run very deep. Back in 1989, E.T. paid a visit to the Iowa farm where Kevin's character conjured the ghosts of the game. More than 100,000 tourists still visited each year. The MLB has even recreated the film's magic during the regular season. I'm in awe. It is absolutely spectacular. You were playing catch with your son. How was that like? That was good, you know. Um, I, I, I wanted to have that moment with him because we played since he was little. I really feel like this movie's our generation's It's a Wonderful Life. You know, it, it's a movie that doesn't have a category, and it's a movie that can remind people why they like movies because it's a journey. It's as good a movie as I've ever made. Kevin's passion for Hollywood started with his parents, who took him to the movies once a week as a kid growing up in California. I was kind of a late bloomer kid. I went to four different high schools, and I thought, gee, I'm not like uh, developing like everybody else. You know, they're a little funnier, they're a little cooler. And I wasn't always shy, I just wasn't terribly confident. But before Kevin became the bona fide movie star we know and love, he was credited as fun-loving frat boy number one in Ron Howard's Night Shift but one of his first gigs never even saw the light of day. It's true, I, I was cut out of the big chill and uh, there was a, a measure of disappointment. <laughs> da -na 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 E.T. first met Kevin in 1985 ahead of American Flyers, which premiered one month after his breakout in Silverado. When I read it, I thought to myself, boy, you know, this could be maybe one of the great parts that I'll have uh, ever played. Yeah, no, no trouble. Two years later, The Untouchables helped make Kevin a household name and earned him his first million dollar paycheck. I think it's a movie that will be watchable for a long, long time. But it was the steamy scenes in movies like No Way Out that helped cement his sex symbol status. That's such a difficult thing for me to even think about being hot or something. There is a very um, lusty mm -hmm. love scene. Right. Did you feel emotionally Naked in that scene? Yeah, I, I did. In fact, I made up some lines because I was feeling that way. How you doing, Bill? The fact is I am a little more comfortable on a horse than I am in a, in a woman's arms. And the secret behind this not safe for work scene in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? That's not me in the uh, pool. So, so, so if, 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 if women are impressed and they got the wrong guy. You're scared. But I still think you should leave. Susan Sarandon and right. Voldura. What you're talking about is a very skilled actress and you, who's got this natural presence, who's got this natural sexuality, who's got this natural intelligence. Mm -hmm. You know, all things so, sometimes can be very threatening to men. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, this is a total woman. Susan Sarandon, Robin Wright, Renee Russo, Jennifer Aniston. You have a love scene with Jennifer? Oh, uh, yeah. You good? We wrestle. She shows me up against a wall. Really? Yeah. Is she a good kisser? <laughs> Look, you know what? I, I make it a point to not talk about my uh, my girls on screen that way. So that's how you keep your, keeping your friends. Kevin's had his fair share of on-screen kisses with off-screen friends, and one of the world's biggest pop stars in her big screen debut. We'll always love you. I thought that Whitney was beautiful and that she was talented, and that I could certainly fall in love with her. So I was like, all right, well, don't put your tongue in my mouth, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Whitney and Kevin's chemistry in The Bodyguard was clear, but she almost turned down the role despite being handpicked by Costner himself. I felt like, can I do this movie? Can I really pull this movie up? We postponed the movie for a year, which then said, everybody, you're waiting a year for Someone doesn't even know how to act, you know? I said, yeah, well, she's really very, very special. He said, if you don't do this movie, I won't do this movie. And I made her a promise. I said, you will not be embarrassed, and you'll be very proud of yourself at the end of this movie. It was also Kevin's idea for Whitney to sing this. And I... Kevin chose this song. I listened to it, and I said, you know, you're absolutely right. This is the song. The soundtrack is still the best selling of all time, and here's a secret. Kevin was working on a sequel. Princess Diana, she was interested in the idea. Some friends set up a, some, the beginning phone conversation between uh, the princess and I. It stayed in phone conversations and it stayed in, let's see what happens in the future. I made a special point not to tell anybody for the longest time. Our secret was between us. I think she might have done it. You could have talked her into it? I feel like I could have. <laughs> 
Well, let's all pull the bodyguard back out and watch it again this weekend because Whitney's voice was undeniable. But little did we know, Kevin had his own musical ambitions. The trouble keeps falling. I've always loved storytelling. So whether it's a you know five minute song or three hour movie, I'm in. Kevin Costner and Modern West formed back in 2007, and E.T.'s been with the band since the beginning, scoring backstage access before their 08 Grand Old Opry debut, where Kevin got a pep talk from Vince Gill. You have reached the mountain, the mecca. No, I know. I mean, I, I, got, I got a little shakes to prove it. <laughs> I'm 90 miles from nowhere. I've had a chance to do some pretty unique things in my life, and uh, playing here is going to be... Uh, Something I remember talking about for a long time. The country band has released five albums and toured the world, including Nashville, where we were behind the scenes at their 2012 show. This is the nervy part. This is the one, you know, when people talk about butterflies a little bit, I have them. And got a bus tour from a humble Kevin before they hit the stage. It's not that I'm a great musician. I try to write songs. Some of them are good, and most of them aren't so good. I love away from me. On this trip, you have Lily with you, your daughter. That's right. I went and I, it was, it's time for her to make some money for the family. <laughs> and, and More than a decade later, Lily is still collaborating with her dad. Their duet and four other Modern West tunes have been featured on Yellowstone. Special treat for me when my daughter sings. It's a bit Tend of a haunting song. Doubt and test your faith. All three kids really make me proud. Ah, but Kevin wasn't done there. His family would continue to grow. I've had eight or nine dogs, and I love them all. But there's one dog, and it's a once in a lifetime. Kevin Costner is definitely a dog man. He recently adopted this adorable pup, and in 2019, he voiced one in The Art of Racing in the Rain. You've been a good friend. The best of friends. But clearly, voiceover work and acting isn't Kevin's only passion. So is his gift of directing. You know, when the curtain opens for a movie that I direct. Are you the postman? He's on you! I really want it to be great because movies are gifts and, and uh, you don't want it to be just average. Go home, two sucks. Kevin's directorial debut, Dances with Wolves, is arguably one of the greatest Western films of all time. It earned over 400 million at the box office worldwide and seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture. He thanks Dances with Wolves for coming. Who's Dances with Wolves? In the three-hour adventure drama, Kevin plays a Civil War lieutenant who befriends a Sioux tribe. The success that we had with that picture uh, was just a, was a thrill. In 1997, Kevin reportedly passed Air Force One off to Harrison Ford so he could direct and star in The Postman, a nearly three-hour film about a traveler who inspires hope in a post-apocalyptic world by delivering old mail. You're a godsend. The late Tom Petty was also in the film, and E.T. got a first-hand look at the over-the-top set. I saw this dam and said, we're going to put a city here, and everybody goes, what? you got to be kidding me. I said, no, can't we do that? Yeah, it was go big or go home for Kevin. I mean, have you seen Waterworld? I like to swing for the fences, and this movie, you know, does. At the time, the action adventure was the most expensive movie ever made. Even a reported budget of $175 million couldn't get it done. You know, working on the water has extended us. A hurricane destroyed the floating set, and production was delayed for nearly two months. Kevin even had a near-death experience, getting caught in a squall while tied to the mast of the boat. I was lucky God was watching out for me. On top of all that, he didn't see eye to eye with director Kevin Reynolds, who eventually walked off set. You ended up taking this movie in the editing room and having to deliver the finished film. Yeah, I didn't want to have to do that. What about your relationship with Kevin Reynolds now? It's not good for us to work together. Kevin's 16-year marriage to wife Cindy fell apart during filming, too. The divorce ended up reportedly costing him $80 million. It doesn't matter how you're hurting or how you're feeling. You have to show up. What'd you think? Um, well, he, he doesn't make bad movies, so. What was your favorite part? Um, I have a bunch of favorite parts. The only Waterworld review that mattered to Kevin is the one that came from his kids. He's got seven. The oldest three grew up in front of E.T.'s cameras. Oh, my daughter's asleep. I think we better go sit her down. Okay, let's go. Well, this is Joe. Hi. This is Lily. Hi. And this is Ann. What did you think? I liked it. Good. What did you like best about it? The 
the parts that my dad did. Hey, look at me, man. Get your shirt tucked in there. <laughs> I know. So was it your idea for the tie, or was it? You been drinking, Joe? What's the matter? <laughs> He's a great dad, and, he, and he, you know, he'll play football with you. And you, you have to play with your children. Kevin, you got a favorite moment from tonight? It's not oh, Jeopardy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> it's important that they know they're special. What they have to realize is they're just not better than anybody else. But there are some perks to having the Costner name. That was Kevin's son Joe and Kevin's parents in his 1996 movie Tin Cup. Joe also co-starred alongside his two older sisters in The Postman. No, you're grounded. Get off the horse. What? What is it that makes you say, I want to direct this? He didn't really want to let anybody else direct my children. I just liked learning um, and being with him and watching him. We're forever locked in cinema together. You know, we've got 70 millimeter home movies. And while he and their mother, Cindy, divorced in 1994, Kevin remained a hands-on dad. I was determined that it, I wasn't going to be a weekend father. The first time we were in a hotel, I felt low. It wasn't a home. I felt like an absolute failure. And uh, there was a rollout bed. And I said, push them together. We're all sleeping together. Why is she hiding? Because I'm tall enough that she can't. Elle McPherson was Kevin's first public relationship after his divorce, and in 1996, he had a son, Liam, with actress Bridget Rooney. Then came model Christine Baumgartner. E.T. was there when they tied the knot at his Aspen Ranch in 2004 in front of celebrity friends like Bruce Willis, Don Johnson, and Tim Allen. You know when you're on a, a piece of property like this, Chris is, just wanted to come up in a pickup. And in 2007, at the age of 52, Kevin became a dad all over again. He and Christine welcomed Caden, Hayes, and Grace all in the span of three years. Well, in the second half of your life, how do you keep up? I know, you just life? say, I, I got a candy bar, get over here. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't have to chase him very far when you talk about chocolate. It's all right, I'm gonna be with dad. And just like his older half-siblings, 15-year-old Hayes is appearing alongside his pops, making his acting debut in Horizon. Dad's a full, it's like a 365 day deal. It's a privilege, you know, and uh, you, you know, we don't always do it perfect, but like, you try. My life's been really filled with great moments and great places, and, and those are what I remember. Yes, y'all, and Kevin Costner is too blessed to be stressed, and that is evident in his thoughtful approach to his life and his career. Look at that smile on his face. We leave you now with more of Kevin in his own words. I was Take care, y'all. Night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> pretty public place. I work in a very public way, but I'm pretty private. Well, the public has been so in love with you. I think that my relationship with the public is simply one. It's the, about the movies. I only go with what I think is the right script. It's been a really privileged life, and I try not to ever forget it. So yeah, you know, I, it is a good job. <laughs>